Well, hi guys. My name's Paul. This is Plan Z. Welcome to the session. I hope it finds you very well. Now, what I wanted to do today is a follow-up session to the last one I did where I'm kind of talking about um, arrangement ideas that I'm discovering with the things that didn't work as I expected to in the RC600. I'm also at the same time sound checking a couple of different guitars, might even do three. I've got single calls, P90s and humbuckers. Um, to put through Vox amp sims here. I've got four patches I want to use for this jam. Now the basses we're going to hear were recorded using GT1000 as well, okay? Now I'm using a, a Boss VE500 for my vocals. And we do have an SY300 uh, in, the, in, in the mix. We've got an HX effects in the mix, but we might not use those in this session. Let's see how we get on. I want to just, I'm not going to play songs or anything. I want to talk to you about arrangement ideas and it's probably going to be quite mechanical the session and um, I'll talk through different bits and bobs it's not going to be about getting into a flow um, but it is the subject matter is about getting into a flow with arrangements and little ideas I've, I've kind of thinking of along the way with this little template I'm building so what I've done is I've got three versions of the same template in the RC600 right where what we've got is this top button here where my foot is just gone over yeah, that top button there that's white and now gone red is um, when we're red, we're in record, play, dub. When we're white, we're in play, stop. When this button over here is red, that I've just put my foot over and now it's gone blue, this is sending signal to the loopers. When it's blue, it's going to the 505, which I've got linked. Um, just MIDI tempo linked at the moment. I've not dived deep enough into that just yet for MIDI assigns and things like that. Um, and when this is red, it's going into the RC600. When this is green, it's bypassing, okay? Now I can be bypassed and select where I want to go before I engage it, okay? But for most of this session, I think we're going to be using the 600. Now, um, the thing I wanted to kind of talk about is this. I was getting into a flap last time. My my workflow now I have I, I set this up so it was all six on one okay and when I did that I kind of went one that, oh, this, that, this is now my track six so I just started that let's just stop that I didn't mean to press that then um, and then we uh, so it would be one two three four yeah and down to six but I've gone the other way around the reason for this is because as we've just heard I commonly will put a beat here now this beat has triggered what I've got here on the 505 and I can turn that off let's turn that off now let's say I want to just go down to these sticks that are on here turn off my beat but not have any audio coming from the 505 and still keep things running so I've got a blank loop here on a two bar measure and I'll use that to put loops on and undo them so that I can get back to this state. Does that make sense? And the reason I have my sticks here is to give me something to keep um, rhythm to. So let's say, for example, I wanted to start a song. Let's bring that bass back in. Um, and I've got a, another blank loop, exactly the same as this one that's lit up here. Here. Let's engage it. Now this one's on an eight bar loop. Now let's say I want to put in a loop here. Um, so let's bring up the volume on the guitar. Let's put on an effect. Let's get to that here. Now at the moment, if, I'd have, if that was a blank loop, the moment I press that, it's recording. Yeah, so I even need to be bypassed and let it record nothing for a minute or if I'm engaged with my looper this way I can turn it on I've already recorded nothing to the loop it was saved like that and now I can come in whenever I want let's get into record mode let's put the beat on see I'm messed up getting into record mode there so the audience doesn't need to know I can just come in now making a mistake, not being ready, and there was no faff and no unsyncing of audio or anything for me to worry about. I just 
start at the loop, hit record when I want to, and the audience is none the wiser, okay? Now, this, this loop over here, I plan to use it to, with two loops on it, okay? So if, I'm gonna put the other loop on, which will be a fuzz. I'm gonna start a bit, and I'm gonna come in on the next round. in the bass line. Now, these two tracks that are white, I'm going to do, I'm going to turn off those. Now, they're going to end at the end of the loop. Okay? What I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in the bass line that's next to it. Now this is the bass line that would accompany those guitar parts. They sound a bit thin on their own. They should be sitting with this bass line. Now this bass line is like my verse groove and also probably my uh, bridges in various different parts. Yeah, I'm going to use it in different ways and I want to illustrate that now with you. So, um, and how I'm going to try doing that is using this same patch, I'm going to go to change the vibe now. I'm going to take away the bass that was coming from here. I'm now going to utilize the blank loop I spoke about at the beginning. Let's get it primed to record. Let's go. I'm going to try and take it as a one loop. Up. I was one. Do you know what my brain thought? Is the camera running? Yes, it is. So now I'm going to focus. So let's go. I'm going to try that again. This. And I'm going to show a couple of different ways of using this in a slightly rockier jam in a minute using the same beats. But what I want to be able to do is switch. If you watch the loop over here, you can see the round. You can see the round of the loop we're on, but this is a longer round. This is my eight bar round happening here. Yeah? And the second half, there's a chord change there. Now, I'm going to go to play mode and I'm going to switch these. And this is going to change and come in halfway through the round there and I'm going to hit this off I'm going to try and do the reverse come back in for the beginning so that's a nice little arrangement trick there I'm going to try doing it again we might go back just a nice solid bass drum groove and last night I was jamming with that and I came up with a little vocal harmony that I left saved here so I could remember what I did it was very late at night if this might sound bad I've not heard it yet but what I want to do now is try and transform the vibe of the song so let's bring that in um, let's give some context we're gonna be fine 
Let's talk about that. I'd like a setting in here where I can set up two types of all, all start stop on one that helps me manage how loops actually end. So I like, and I'm going to show you why I like the way this, this works at the moment. For many people, that's a glitch and a problem. And I was like, oh, damn, you could, that means you could do this. So I'm going to show you what I'm going to try doing with that in a minute. But um, where are we? What I'm thinking of doing with my RC... Um, 600 is I've got all start stop here yeah as my button 7 when I go into long press I go into mode 3 where I've got memory up and down and I want to assign here two all start stops so I'll have the all start stop here as well same as it is in mode 1 and 2 so I can access it here but also I want to put it a different one using different assigns that gives me a different type of all start stop and I'll set up different tracks for that. But, you know, if we were able to kind of manage that end, I could do that loop end and snap it so it actually stops like the 300 used to. The 300 used to just stop, yeah? Um, so that's what I would like to happen in future updates. But at the moment, how can I utilize that mistake? Well, let's, let's come into this. What I'm going to do is pull... What the frig are you going to do? I'm going to come in really heavy. All the synth basses, yeah? Um, and just the eight bar round of things. With, remembering we're working in four measures and eight, eight measures. I'm just going to bring everything that's on the eight measure in. And we'll be quite heavy. And then I'm going to try and end the song. Um, and what I'll do is, it'll happen in the last measure. I'm going to stop the track and the last bit of guitar will just overspill and I quite like what happened when I did this the other night so let's um let's put on a boost let's go to the back pickup um this hopefully could be a bit heavy so we're going to try stopping the song Are you with me? You can wind down a part like that. So I quite like how that function works. Now what I like also is that I've saved the same. Actually before, if we, mm, let me come out of there. Uh, no, I think we've covered a couple of different things there. Let's, let's change track now. So I'm going to lose all my loops. And what we're going to do before we do that is we're going to go back to, let's turn that off. So here, I've got those guitars on this four, and I'm gonna put the beat on. I'm gonna put the sub basses on. We're gonna be fine. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my control button to help me select the track I want to manipulate. 
on to track four, I'm going to undo. At the end of the round. Drums and I'm just running this this loop now. I've undone it and we're running a silent loop. We're gonna be fine. Now I'm gonna change track. Actually, before we change track, what I might do is just change patch. Let's pull that back. Now I've got a bin drum delay here. Let's see if we can't do something curious with this. Let's change track, so I'm going to go up a memory where I've got the same setup, same beats and everything, but a different bass line. I'm going to come out of there. Stop. I'm going to come in. a tune I quite like that you can be playing something and go to the next memory in the RC600 and just completely change vibe, start a different track, do whatever you want to do but I'm linked here so I need to be smart about how I do that. So in this one you can see we set up the same way, they'll end at the end. So now what I want to try doing is testing that the principle of what I was just jamming with, with the two different parts and then releasing into the longer part with a slightly different jam where um, I'm going to use a stereo patch. I'm going to try putting in, first off, let's start off the beats. Into record mode. Now I've got a, a, a different type of bass line here, and I just want to do quite a cheesy little rock riff in uh, four measures. Yeah, so this is going to be quite cheesy. there but we recovered ish so I've got that loop there let's uh, stop that loop now I'm not going to go do arrangement it would take too long to go into arrangement to get these parts to work like this but I'm going to use the same amps and we're going to come in now on an all start stop where we'll have the different bass groove and I'm going to play the different guitar part to that so I'm just setting up the parts to play around with okay um, Okay, so now I've got the two parts. What I could do is come here and play along with it.
See, I ran into trouble there, and I need to sort that out. But do you get the principle of the idea? Is that you can now, now you've got those two parts in there. You can be in one groove. I'm going to wait. Hit this at any point, and it's going to change. I just need to remember to hit this one to turn it off. And then do the same here. So we're going to hit this. We're going to start halfway through this round. I need to bring that in earlier. Boss, this, where it starts on the release, does my head in. So, um, what I'm going to do now is just change guitar. Now we're going to be in drop D. I'm going to change this looper here. Now, there's nothing on there other than... <laughs> God. Other than the clicky sticks. Okay. Um, I've taken the bass lines away. Let's change to the channel where I've got the less pull. Let's bring up the game pot. How are we sounding? Let's just check. We're tuned. Close enough for me. Okay. So in this one, we're going to get a little bit heavier. And we've got the same beat. But we've got a different bass line and dropped in. But this one... I'm set so everything stops. There's no funky business going on. Okay? Um, and I just want to see how heavy this sounds with this guitar amp. Um, that's pretty much the only reason I'm doing this part. It... So... I think I might put the loops on the 5x5. What I'm going to do actually, let's start that again. Now I want to capture some of the overspill from the delay here. quite catch it, started my loop a little bit too late, so now I'm going to stick in Bypass the loopers, go to the fuzz on, set the trouble fist on. Just gotta go to a, a high game with a treble boost. Bridge pickup. Let's try a distortion on the voice. I'll be loose with my heart and my candle. I've been beating my head with storms in my head.
I've swapped my wets. Did have a delay on that. Let's get out of here. Um. So that's just a reverb coming from the HX effects, which is after my two notes here. Now what I'm going to do is change out. I'm going to stick on a synth. I'm going to stick on the fuzz. And I think I'm going to stick on the treble boost. <laughs> Struggling to keep that fuzz under wraps. I need to look at my noise suppression um, in the GC1000 there, I think, maybe. We'll see. Maybe I'm just driving that a little bit too hard for the Les Paul. I'll catch you in a little bit. Um, I said to catch you in a little bit. And, um, yeah, I'm going to be heading off. I'm in a little bit of pain at the moment. Um, <laughs> um, so um, my brain's not thinking right. Hopefully, uh, we've been able to hear there how flexible this this some of the things that we didn't expect to work the way we wanted to with the loop syncs ending the way they do and things like that when you are synced you can do some really interesting stuff with it so it would be nice not to lose that if they modify it does that make sense is what i'm trying to say um because i've i've just found some quite little interesting things that i could use in different styles of music um yeah hopefully you're well catch you later <laughs>